Okay, before we go through how the slowly changing dimension functions, we're just going to review some of the data that I'm going to push through it. So what I've got here is some uh, information about computers that I may be using in my company. I've got a Dell, an HP, and an Apple. This is my existing dimension from my warehouse. And you can see that we've got some effective and expiry dates and a surrogate key in addition to the business key of manufacturer model and serial number. Down on the bottom I've got uh, a source system, so this is what's coming from my line of business application that's tracking those computers. Again, the Dell, the HP, and the Apple. And what we're going to see here is that in the past that Dell got changed from Vista Ultimate to Windows 7 RC and that's why those expiring effective dates are different, why it's got two records. What we're going to change in this run through in the processing is that we're going to change that Dell from 7RC to 7 Ultimate. And the other thing that we're going to do is going to fix something on that Apple record for the MacBook. We're going to take a look at that purchased by, and you're going to see that that's misspelled, and we're going to fix that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the Kimball Method SCD transform off the toolbox onto the design surface. We're going to hook up the existing dimension that's coming from our data warehouse, however you happen to pull that off. We're going to identify that as the existing dimension. And then we're going to pull what's coming from our source system and identify that as the source system. Now we're going to tell the component what each one of the columns in the existing dimension is. So we have to tell it that the surrogate key column is actually the surrogate key whether or not we let the component manage that and populate with new surrogate keys for new rows. We're going to tell it that the date effective and date expire columns help manage our SCD2 versions. And then we're going to identify our business key of manufacturer, model, and serial number. And it's sufficient just to identify those columns as participating in the business key. It doesn't matter what order they're in in a sort or anything like that at this point, only when we get to optimizing the component. The purchase date, purchased by, and purchased price fields are all SCD1. If any of those values change, we want that change to apply. It's basically a fix to all history. The computer name, operating system, and assigned user, if any of those change, we want a new version of the row to be constructed, dated today. At this point, we're done with the basic configuration. We still have to attach outputs. That's why it's coming up with that error, and that's okay and back out to the design surface. Okay, so now what I'm going to do in order to show you what comes out of the components, I'm going to put derived column transformations on each of the outputs so that I can record which outputs they came from. I'm going to union all those together so that we can see that in a data viewer. So I'm going to first going to attach the new output, and then I'm going to go into the drive column component, change the title to say I'm just going to add new as the, the output type, so now I'm going to edit that derived column, put in a derived column called output type, set the value of that to new, and then I'm going to make that a 20 character wide expression just to leave some other room for the other ones and attaching it to the union all component and just works better. Alright, now I'm going to put the union all onto the surface and hook that up. And then next I'm going to take a row count component, just have an endpoint for the flow. Put that after the union all, attach that, and then I'm going to put a data viewer on that output of the union all so that we'll be able to see all the rows that come out and what they mean. And so now what we're going to do is basically copy that derived column once for each output uh, from the component, changing the value that's in the output type column to represent the output that it's actually coming from so then when it gets to that drive column component we can tell where it comes from and we're going to fast forward through the rest
As you can see, I've magically added the rest of the drive column components, one for each of the outputs that we're interested for this run through. When you use your component, you may or may not use all the outputs. It's up to you. Uh, I would recommend that you do use most of them, at least to attach them to a row count in case you get some rows out that you're not expecting, because you can log it, audit it, raise a flag. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run the uh, the component through and see what kind of output we get in the data viewer. What we see is we've got five rows coming out. If you remember, we had four rows in the original existing dimension. We've got the original row, the expired row from the Dell up top. We've got the original row from the Dell, which you can now see has been expired by the component. And it's got a new row down at the bottom with a new time. You can also see in the Apple row that we it's actually fixed the purchased by, change the, fix the spelling of that. If we scroll over to the right, we'll see a new column that the components added, the row change reason, which will tell you exactly why it made the decision it did and what output it's sending it to. You can see that in the output type there, which is the result of our drive column components. So you can see two of the rows, one for the original expired Dell has been unchanged, as well as the row for the HP, which we made no changes to. But you can see that the Dell, the original alive Dell record has been expired because it used to be Windows 7 RC and we changed that to ultimate. It's been expired because we made a change to the operating system, which we identified as a slowly changing dimension type 2 column where we wanted to track changes. And the new row has been pushed out the new output for that same Dell now that it's a Windows 7 ultimate operating system and you can see the dates there. It's come up with a new surrogate key because we've asked the component to manage surrogate keys for us.